What's up guys, it's Asthmatic here and welcome to my look at Battlefield 1, They Shall Not Pass. Now this is uh, very special content because EA actually flew me out to their studios in San Francisco to check this out for you guys, so a huge thank you to them. So the first thing we're going to look at right here is the new submachine gun for the assault class in Battlefield 1, They Shall Not Pass. This is the 1918 factory version right here with the iron sights. I take off the bayonet because I'm weird like that. You got a whole bunch of skins that are going to be available for this, uh, for this weapon and I really love this thing. It shoots true, shoots smooth and straight I love it quick reload as you can see right there taking this guy out without any further ado some buckthorn sights for you guys right there to check out if you're a fan grenades also featured in battlefield one they shall not pass another look right here in the hillsides of Soissons Rocking the iron sights right now on the 1918. All right, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the meta class, and the RSC 1917 Optical is the new rifle that we get, and I have been loving this thing. Here's a look at it in the menu for you guys, but let's go ahead and hit the ground running and take a look at the RSC 1917. Now, this is the optical variant, which means it has the lens sight. You've got all your configuration options that you're used to. The highlights of this rifle, Shoots a little slow, but it shoots very smooth. You've got six rounds in the magazine. You are a two-shot kill. So as you can see right here, playing it safe on the hillside, but when I pop up and see an enemy right here coming down on me, I'm able to just one, two, and he's done. Reloads real quick. It almost feels like a magazine-fed weapon. You pop out the bottom, throw in a whole new batch of ammo, close that up, and you're back in the fight. But fear not, my support class fans out there, because you get a brand new weapon. A low weight word that I can't pronounce, as I like to call it. You've got, we're starting off right here with the regular iron sights on this guy, and this is one of my new favorite support class weapons. Rock and roll. Now, as long as you don't get uh, annihilated by an enemy with the Flame Trooper Kid, you're going to do all right with this thing. You get a super smooth, super quick reload, as you got to see right there. Laying down some suppressive fire down the hallway right here. Things don't really work out so well for my friend right here, but eh, you can't win them all. You do also have the anti-aircraft sights available on this weapon, much like other support class weapons. I really like this weapon all around because it has a feel almost of an assault rifle with a low magazine, quick reload. And when you gotta get things done with the knife, that's there for you as well. With a, with a well-placed trigger finger and good shot cadence, you can do some damage with this guy at long range as well, but I ran out of ammo because I'm just not that awesome. <laughs> and for the snipers, here is the LaBelle Model 1886. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not really the best sniper, but I have gotten some gameplay for you guys here so that you can check out what this awesome rifle is like to shoot. Here is the infantry version running the radium sights. I'm able to take out a couple guys here on Soissons. Mm. Getting them done. You got an eight round magazine, bolt action of course, just a straight up no BS sniper rifle, we are losing objective which would have been able to kill that guy in the hands of a better shot. So the new weaponry that DICE has got for you guys in Battlefield 1 This Shall Not Pass is beyond just that which you can hold in your own two hands. You love using the field gun because it allows you to dish out lots of firepower way down range. Now they've one-upped it right here with this field artillery because this cannon, which usually sits back at, you know, somebody's spawn, gives you the ability to launch huge amounts of firepower all the way across the map, as you can see right here. Now when you're using this weapon, your UI is pretty sweet, as you're gonna get to see right here. You get the full mini-map blown up and you get all your nice little red dots for everywhere that your teammates have been being helpful by spotting out enemies on the map. Right now I'm playing operations on the attack, so I'm just laying down heavy fire right there on objective alpha as best that I can and getting some kills for it as well. I feel like they've done a really good blend of, you know, you obviously have to watch as your shot goes right here. You get to see where enemies are visually. It's a very good balance of not being able to fire too much because this weapon is so crazy powerful, whereas at the same time they really bring in the, the visuals of this weapon where you get to see this beautiful reload animation right here at the same time as getting to line up your next shot. Not a moment is wasted. You get a beautiful view of the map right here and you get an even more beautiful view of your enemies being taken out.
All right. So here's just another review for you guys, different time of day. I waited like three hours for the sun to change position so that we could come back and get this, this content for you guys right here. So we can see a really cool animation on this weapon. I just really loved it and wanted to check it out one more time to show you guys. You can see it firing. You can actually see the shell flying through the air. And when you're on the receiving end of one of these shells, it looks and feels a little bit like this. Now guys, no Battlefield 1 expansion would be complete without new maps. And the first one that I've got to share with you here today is Verdun Heights. Described to me by Jeff Braddock as the map on fire. Uh, when we actually got in and got to play this map, that description was proven true over and over again. We can see here a little bit of the rush gameplay as we're defending Objective A. Taking that guy out right there. Getting her done. Verdun Heights offers many different styles of gameplay from the trench warfare that World War I was known for, including some interior structures right here like this Objective Delta. And then Objective Echo right up here at the top of the hill. When you're playing Conquest, this is the objective closest to uh, the team spawn who's up here on the top of the hill. And while it seems like they might have a lot of cover right here inside this fortress, the attackers coming up the hill do still have an opportunity to use this hillside as cover. And even though they've got the sentry class right there, a well-trained assault rifle will take them out real quick. I told you this was the map on fire and I wasn't kidding. Pushing up the hill right here. We've got all the enemies up on top who are pinning us down hard. And you can see the trees, and the hillside, and absolutely everything. Absolutely engulfed in flames on Verdun Heights. You can see right here when you run out of Objective Delta down the green countryside hill running over to Objective Echo, things change really quickly because when you enter the war zone that was Verdun. The nice areas that you left behind were completely left behind. And you're disgruntled such that you can't even shoot straight. The next map that we've got for you right here is Fort de Vaux, which is going to become known, I think, very quickly in the community as the Battlefield 1 Operation Locker, defined by its interior structures with tight hallways that are going to require insane map knowledge in order to successfully navigate and outsmart your enemies. That's also paired with these intense outside structures or outside areas that we can see right here where if the inside's just not working for you, you can run around the exterior right here. And fight the enemy on the open ground. Let's take a look at some of the insanity that takes place on the interior. So in these hallways right here, they don't stay quiet for very long because you get your team together, go after the objectives. Taking a look around because in my first five minutes of playing, I do not have the map knowledge yet. This map offers some super intense gameplay moments because when you're playing, whether it be in Conquest or Rush or the new Frontlines game mode, these tight hallways get full of soldiers and grenades and things get intense so quickly. The next map for you guys in They Shall Not Pass is known as Rupture, and I believe this is going to go down in history as the most beautiful map in Battlefield 1. The French countryside covered with beautiful blooming red poppies. Uh, but let's just say they don't stay the only red thing on the map for very long, because as soon as you guys get out here and you start tracking down your enemies, things get crazy. I can see a couple soldiers right there trying to go prone and hide in the bushes, hide in the flowers, but I'm able to hop up right over here using the brand new brand new rifle for the support class. Take those guys out. Can't say the same for my tank though. They didn't do too well. 
Alrighty guys, so right here is the brand new behemoth in Battlefield 1, They Shall Not Pass. So the first thing that I want to point out to you guys is that this is a tank, and I know that's obvious from looking at it, but the point is that the existing behemoths we have are like the train that's bound to the train tracks and the ship that's bound to the ocean and the airship, which while it can fly anywhere on the map is up in the sky and yeah, you can shoot down on your enemies, but what really makes this behemoth interesting is that you can drive anywhere and you know there's always that one objective that you just can't take over and you absolutely have to in order to turn the tide of the battle. This behemoth allows you to do that because you can drive this thing right to the enemy base, drive through that base, take them out, capture that objective, and win the day. Alrighty guys, now for the final map in They Shall Not Pass, I give you Soissons. A combination of both houses and open areas, you can see a pretty little tree house hanging out right there. And the yes, that is fully climbable with ladders and a great place for snipers to hang out. You've got these houses right here that provide some really intense interior gameplay. And you can get lucky sometimes if you're playing pigeons. And like happened to me right there, the pigeon spawned right on top of me. But we're going to cut the second half of that clip out because things didn't really go my way. Keeping an eye on what's going on out on the street and watching the wireframe version of your friend stab somebody in the back right there are two of my favorite things to do on Soissons. And right here we're going to check out my buddy setting up for the mortars and dropping some death on the enemy pigeon carrier. And now for the newest vehicle to the world of Battlefield 1. This is the French assault tank. The driver of this vehicle gets the primary cannon that you see me shooting right there, and you've also got a secondary driver, or not a secondary driver, excuse me, your first gunner. You can see his gun barrel sticking out just there on the right side of the screen. He's actually a forward-facing gunner, which I think is a super interesting change and something new to the tanks themselves. The cool thing that this tank has that only it has is the ability to send out a carrier pigeon that you see right here. So when you're in the enemy, when you're in the enemy area and you're just there's nothing else you can do and there's guys surrounding you everywhere with dynamite, you send out this pigeon and he calls in an artillery strike on your position. So you risk your tank, but it also gives you the ability to hopefully take out some of those guys who are crowding it around you. Now there's a little shot right there of actually being the forward gunner in this tank and you can see some support gameplay here. So I did some of this, one I can help my guy over here by repairing the tank, but so that you guys can see you've got a gunner right here off the left, you've got a gunner right there on the right and then you've got another machine gunner off to the right so that that way every part of this tank is defended. Now Battlefield 1 They Shall Not Pass also brings to the table a brand new elite class. The Trench Raider is a unique elite class because he's defined by his ability to, while still being armored, he moves quickly. This guy's a sprinter. This guy runs around and he gets up in your face. Believe me, it's scary. Well, actually, no, you don't have to believe me. You can just go ahead and watch this clip right here of Stone Mountain 64 himself chasing me down. So as we push up the hill right here, I'm able to take out a couple dudes, running backwards, get a little reload, smoke grenade, can't really see what's going on. And here comes the Trench Raider. Now this was the part of my time playing Battlefield 1 that made me really excited. We weren't recording our audio because I was screaming like a baby that entire time up to and past my death. So Front Lines is the brand new game mode that DICE has got for us in They Shall Not Pass. And pretty much this is a blend of conquest and rush because when the game begins you've got an objective in the center that both teams are going for a conquest style objective and when you take that objective over you get another one that's closer to the enemy base or if they take it over there's one closer to your base right now we're taking over this objective charlie which is closest to the enemy base so we're going to capture this and now it turns into rush now we got to go take out the two telegraph posts inside the enemy base so you can see on my screen here now i'm going after objectives a and b and we're gonna push up the hill right here and head into the enemy base. Now here's a couple screenshots showing the map. So this is a section right here, we've got B and then there's A on the left and C on the right that we would be taking over. And then this screenshot right here shows what it's like when you're being pushed back and you're having to defend that A and B. We had a lot of fun taking out this final objective right here. If you look at my screen, you can see a lot of guys on the mini map backing me up. So we're ready to do the full on breach and clear. Front lines on Fort Deveu is one of my favorite new, you know, map and uh, map and game combinations in They Shall Not Pass, and I can't wait 
to get into this in Asthmatic Game Night for you guys in future weeks. So do check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash asthmatic, every Monday night, 7 p.m. Pacific, for Battlefield 1. So thank you guys all very much for being a part of my experience and going and trying out some new Battlefield 1 content. Now this was They Shall Not Pass, but the great news is that we've got more expansions coming in the future for Battlefield 1, so be sure to keep it locked right here on Asthmatic Gaming. And at the same time, be sure to check us out every Monday night, like I said, over on twitch.tv slash asthmatic. And a huge thank you to everyone over at Electronic Arts for inviting me out to their studio to play some of this, for taking care of me on that. It was a great time. Thank you guys so much. And a special thank you as well goes out to Jeff Braddock, our North American Community Manager, for reaching out to me to have me included as part of this. So victory indeed. Thank you guys very much. We'll catch you next time.